Perfect. Oh my gosh. Miserable. It's always bad. Scale of 1 to 10, probably about an 8. I'll give it like a 9. It's obnoxious. Chicago's traffic congestion is obnoxious, but would you believe it's getting to be as obnoxious as LA's? When I hear that, I think I hopefully will be living in uh, Scottsdale or Miami by then. Well, today the average Windy City commuter spends 70 hours per year stuck in traffic. That ties Washington, D.C. for the worst in the nation. And yeah, it's even worse than L.A. It's like the same amount of time you spend on vacation every year, you spend stuck in traffic if you're a typical commuter in Chicago. And if you think things are bad now, just wait. Chicago has a 25-year plan that says in 25 years, we will have spent billions of dollars and everything will be worse. There is no fun in sitting in traffic. It raises my blood pressure. Something that will usually take you some 15 minutes to get somewhere, it takes you an hour. Stress and wasted time. Two awful effects of traffic congestion. But there are many others. By a whole slew of economic and personal measures, congestion is much worse than people realize. Imagine this is you in your car. The circle represents the amount of ground you can get to in a reasonable amount of time, say 30 minutes. The dots represent all the possible jobs you could apply for. The bigger your opportunity circle, the better chance you have of landing a great job. But in Chicago and many other cities, opportunity circles are shrinking because traffic congestion is growing. If it gets any worse than what it is now, I have to start looking for somewhere else to work. Smaller opportunity circles shrink businesses too. The circle within the city that they can expect customers to come from the worse congestion is, the smaller that circle is. I work at a restaurant where 90% of our business is pre-theater, and so people are coming in from the suburbs to see the show, and they're always late. Latecomers may skip the trip downtown entirely if gridlock keeps getting worse, but what if we could get traffic moving? Think about it. How would your life change if you could get to places quickly? Spend more time at home rather than on the road. I could probably get more done in a day. I'd be able to get more sleep. I have to work out after work. If I could get down here quicker, then I could work out before work and I have more to do with my day afterwards because I'm a student too. Demetrius Mikes is also a working student. He heads home from his job as a postal worker right in the middle of rush hour. But check out how fast he's going. To me it seems about an hour and a half to two hours. He's talking about this, the 91 express lanes in Orange County, California. With the extra time I, I do my school work, um, you know, talk to my son. Just Time to relax. The express lanes are toll roads that were built right next to the regular lanes, so drivers can choose to use them or not. Tolls are collected electronically, and the price of the toll goes up and down depending on whether it's rush hour or not. The result is free-flowing traffic. If you have these toll lanes, the buses go in there for free, and they're never stuck in traffic because the price is set to always keep those lanes free-flowing. So now you've got a better transit option, too. And taxpayers didn't foot the bill. The express lanes were financed and built by a private company. And when there's no room on the surface, the same concept can go above ground or tunnel underground, as is common in France, England, Australia, and many other nations. So what about folks in Chicago? They're stuck on the Eisenhower and the Kennedy, and they're dreading having to go through the spaghetti bowl, and, and that's, just, you know, that's just the reality. And other than paving them, they really haven't done anything to alleviate the congestion. So how about something new? finally fixing some of the worst traffic snarls. I would just like to get people moving. Here's a new plan that would do that. Build tunnels or elevated lanes if there's no room on the surface. Use pricing to keep traffic flowing and get a private company to build it. And these ideas can work just about anywhere because nationwide there's so much private financing available. Good news for cash-strapped governments because the alternative is pretty awful. Travel will be worse, it'll take longer to get from here to there, there'll be more people stuck on the road, it'll just be worse. Like so many other cities, Chicago's current plan spends billions and traffic gets worse. How about we have a plan to spend those billions of dollars and have transportation be better? 